Welcome to the Maverick House podcast. In this week's podcast, we speak to Lisa Oliver, the author of Gala Day and Chantille Dawn's, two thrillers that have enjoyed worldwide success as ebooks. As my day job, I'm a journalist, so I'm writing non fiction. Really, I'm writing profiles and interviews, so it's not, I don't see it as my own work. I just see that I'm repeating what somebody's told me and making it sound interesting. And the journalism really came later, after the fiction writing. And for, um, I think it's a great help to have the fiction background before doing non fiction because I, I can understand that I need an interesting story, a beginning, a middle, and an end. And for the fiction, um, I don't really know where I began. I just, I've always liked writing stories, things that I would like to read. I suppose I can best describe it as um, if I haven't got a book to read, then I'll write one. <laughs> And um, as far as having any routine, I'm the worst example to any would-be author because I get up in the morning, do the chores as quickly as I can and then get onto the laptop and write. And if people start screaming at me that they're hungry and want dinner, then I'll stop writing, (laughs) make dinner and that's it. But I have no routine. I've got no particular quiet place. If I'm on the bus, I'll get the laptop out and I'll type. If I'm working somewhere and there's a quiet minute, our type. Um, and as far as thrillers go, I, I really had no intention to write a thriller, but to have a good story, you need drama. Um, and if the character doesn't know why something's happening, straight away, really, that's a bit of a thriller because it, it, the reader doesn't know either. So you could say that was accidental. I'm more interested in the psychology of the character and doing bad things to them really to, to, to provide some drama but um, as far as the writing process goes you just can't stop me I have to be torn away from the, the keyboard Do you write at night time or in the day or is it just um, I tend to get a bit tired at night time just because you are using a, a keyboard and a screen it, but Nevertheless, if I'm near to finishing a novel, I'll sit up till two o'clock in the morning and keep going at it because every minute, every spare moment, I want to spend on it. But um, I suppose really I'm a a better writer during the day when you can relax and think about things and you're not tired and there's nothing disturbing you. But to be honest, I'd write at any time. I wouldn't get up early to do it. I just don't work very well before seven o'clock in the morning. But um, I'd get up early to do other things so that I can, round about nine o'clock, ten o'clock, work away. Well, the inspiration for Gala Day, I have to, I'm thinking about back to when it began. I think um, I had a, a... cameo I create this little horse racing world and it has trainers and jockeys in it and one of the jockeys had sort of a cameo appearance in um, a short story or even a a novel that failed that I was working on and I just liked the character and he hung around with me and I thought I must use him one day and um, all of a sudden I kind of thought yeah Pete Allen was a very good apprentice jockey who went straight into being a a top jockey, getting lots of money early on, and then things went wrong through no fault of his own. And I thought, well, what happens if to a person like that who's got used to the high living and, you know, suddenly the funds dry up, what does he do? And, you know, within his profession, he turns to gambling because he knows horses and he thinks he can make money and it never works. Nobody ever understands enough to to win on horses and his reputation becomes really seedy and as soon as I kind of figured that background out it was just the job for me then why does this happen and what happens when he tries to rebuild his career and um, of course he he gets an opportunity to take a top job and he thinks well this is great and grabs it with both hands But then he realises that the job's only been offered to him because of his seedy background and they think that he'll be a puppet really in their hands and do as he's told. So it's how, you know, what he's got to make a decision. Is he going to carry on like that for the money or is he going to kind of stand up for himself and let some sort of integrity take over?
for Chantilly Dawns, that was probably the book that I always wanted to write. I, I just really wanted to get into the head of um, not necessarily a jockey, but it just worked out for the best that he was a jockey. Um, I thought if you get a, a young kid, horses are very therapeutic and um, the horse language, they like a person who doesn't look them in the eye and keeps their hands by their sides and their heads turned away. And, and for a horse, that means I'm your friend. And I liked the idea that you could have this troubled young boy who's got no self-confidence and perhaps has been bullied. And straight away, he's just got, without realising, this unique um, talent and passion for horses. And I thought, well, that's fine. If somebody, I know within our industry, if we discovered someone with a talent, you know, everybody's fighting to get them. And um, so overnight, he's an instant success, a top jockey. But what happens if I pull the rug from under his feet and he's got nothing, um, unlike Pete Allen, he's not got any experience behind him. He's gone from a shy, quiet, perhaps even an abused young man to suddenly being famous, um, plenty of money, everybody looking for him. And then overnight, they're all turning their back on him and um, calling him a fraud. Um, they think that he's deliberately lost races. His whole reputation has gone, but he doesn't know any other world. There's no escape for him. So um, that I've, I, I really liked the psychological aspect of that and how this person is has got to overcome all the past demons before he can sort of even begin to sort out the present problems. Um, and I kept pushing and pushing to see if I could break him completely, and I didn't. He kind of popped up and battled back. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed doing that completely. So, Have you met characters like this on the race course? Um, not really, no. I would never base a character on a real person because, um, for a start, it kind of limits you. Because if you know that person, you start to think they wouldn't do this and they wouldn't do that. So immediately you've, you've lost a little bit of um, bargaining power as an author. Um, you do get inspired by them. Um, but no, I would say on the whole, they could they could be a bit of a caricature of people I've met on, at the races. But um, certainly some of the bit players might be. But the main characters, I've got to have created them from start to finish. And then I might pick out some an aspect of, of a person that I like, or um, it's not so much um, a person or a character. It could be a trait that I've spotted that I like, and I'll draw from here and draw from there. Um, and obviously, you know, I'm trying to make them as realistic as possible. But at the end... It just comes down to my own imagination. It's somebody I've worked on and created. This idea of a troubled person or someone in conflict or someone whom um, uh, the world is not what what it appears to be, mm. is that something that really intrigues you? It obviously does. It does. From a writing aspect, I don't think I'd actually like to meet any of my favourite characters from other books. Um, they'd be too scary or too demanding or, you know, no interest at all. But from as a reader, they're the type of character that intrigue me. And as a writer, um, you're try you've, you've just created your own world. You're playing God. But the best thing is when you're not playing God, you're playing the devil. And you're making life really, really difficult and awkward. And if you've got somebody who's a bit flawed or vulnerable just gives you so you can just sit back and be really cruel <laughs> because I'm so deeply involved in the horse racing industry and work within it as my day job um, that to me it presented the ideal subject I knew I, if I tried to write about somebody in an office I wouldn't have a clue what their daily life would be like so um also, the horse racing world is quite um, a small, intense bubble. Uh, everybody gets up at sort of five o'clock in the morning. Uh, they work with the horses. They go racing. They go get home and go to bed at half past nine. And that's seven days a week. So there's not much outside life. So for me, the trigger point of a story of drama 
is um, a what if scenario and having that little kind of um, intense boiling point of, of this small world and everybody knows each other and knows each other's business it's it really did present quite an ideal opportunity for a thriller um, and the characters for me when I write it it um, begins with the character so I have to think of a person I get heavily involved with them and it's nearly like the birth of a child you, you, you see them growing up and you understand their background um, and then once I understand them fully and know their weaknesses and their strengths but the weaknesses more I know how to play on that and then I can create a plot for them Can you talk to me about your main character Mr Allen Aha, uh -huh. Pete Allen from Gala Day um, I liked uh, I grew up with Dick Francis thrillers and they were great, but they were all National Hunt, which I'm more of a flat racing person. And also the, the hero was so perfect. He was a hero. And if they got hurt, they'd say, oh, you know, this is rather boring and <laughs> has interfered with five minutes of my time. And for me, I wanted somebody I could identify with, just a normal person who's thrown into the hero situation, has to take control. But... He's like the rest of us. He's scared. He feels pain. And, you know, he's not quite sure of the right thing to do. And he hasn't got bags of money at his disposal to bribe his way into things. So um, I liked Pete Allen because he was basically he was flawed and he had problems and weaknesses and he could overcome those. And they were of interest to me in, in working with. So that's that's where Pete Allen came came from. Your books have been very successful, uh, primarily on word of mouth. Um, people have been impressed with the writing and they've been impressed with the plot lines, but also this, I suppose, subculture of racing. Um, tell me about how you've researched these, uh, the material that you use uh, for your inspiration for these books. The inspiration from the books um, has largely come just from my own working life and the people I've worked with. So when I was younger, obviously, the people of my age group, when I was leaving school, I was working in stables. Um, any of the young boys and girls, they were aspiring to be jockeys um, because trainers and owners, you need money and bit of experience behind you so always the jockey um, has been a, has fascinated me and I've understood their working life and their mentality and um, as for the the inspiration from the background it didn't take a lot of research you know it's just something that's instinctive and you know I, I've seen it happen and I'm in admiration you go to stable yards and you see people going about their business and it's just a natural setting for me. It's just something I understand. And the hardest part is to try and avoid jargon and to make it interesting to people who've, who've not come across that situation before and don't understand horses or the industry. But from the feedback that I've received, hopefully that's worked. So it's an introduction to the, the behind the scenes of horse racing. I suppose in choosing the horse racing industry to write about, I was very conscious that there are plenty of books out there and Dick Francis just can't be topped. So I wanted to write something a bit different. But I also wanted to make them accessible to people with no interest in racing, no interest in, in horses. Um, but So to leave out the jargon, but to introduce them to things that might be of interest. So... Hopefully I've managed to juggle that, but um, when I actually began writing, I, it was with a conscious decision that this is for people who might not have any interest in the sport, but have got an interest in the character and the plot. So, um, and at the same time, you don't want to alienate the racing people by explaining things too much. So it's, it was striking a happy balance, which I hope I achieved. <laughs>